Get your lightsabers up, everyone, and please welcome to the MegaCon 2024 stage. Let's hear it for you and McGregor! <laughs> We appreciate you being here. All right, you and uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have a sold out packed house uh, of 26 plus hundred people out there that are here to see you. Uh, yeah, let's make some noise, MegaCon. It is a double, double Jedi feature. So we are gonna talk to you for 40 minutes okay. and then we're gonna bring out someone else that we know that uh, is a famous Jedi. But let's kick things off. My brother. Your brother. <laughs> yeah. My brother got a little lost in his way there. <laughs> he wouldn't listen to me. <laughs> didn't, didn't take orders. If only he had listened. If only he had listened. Uh, we, we are obviously here in Orlando. Uh, if you're a local uh, folk from Orlando or Florida, make some noise right now. <laughs> from out state, you're from a different state, a different country, make some noise, you were here for this. Yeah, yeah. yeah I traveled from another state. <laughs> Still another state of mind, I think. Where were you, where were you before this, were you? I was, in, I, I was in Scotland after Christmas for New Year, and then we went down to, I was doing this big series called um, A Gentleman in Moscow. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And uh, we, we had to, we, our, my union, SAG, uh, had a strike. And uh, during the, so we had to stop. We'd almost finished it, but we hadn't quite. So I went to Scotland just after Christmas. I spent New Year in Scotland, uh, which was fantastic. It's been a long time since I had a, we have a big, Scottish New Year's are fantastic. They're called Hogmanay. And it's mm. a special sort of um, celebration where you say goodbye to the old year and you welcome in the new and it's, still uh, not the same anywhere else in the world really and right. i just hadn't been at home for a hogmanay in a long long time so it was really nice to do that then we went to manchester this is probably too it's probably too big of an answer for a simple question no 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 and uh, we're wrapped the audience is wrapped <laughs> <laughs> we finished up gentlemen in moscow we had eight days we shot that i went back to scotland spent uh, 10 days in scotland mm. i made a nice little film with my brother my brother colin um is my uh, two years older than me and um, we went off and made this little film up in Scotland for a travel company called Expedia that I w work with. Yes. And um, Expedia, Expedia, <laughs> uh, Expedia. Oh and, God. Um, uh, and we made this film. It was really fun. Just the two of us knocking about the Highlands for two days, and they shot us in these different locations. It was very nice. And then I went. Then I went to Sweden Ooh. because I did a film last year called Mother Couch with a director. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, with a director called Nicholas Larsson, mm -hmm. who's Swedish. Mm -hmm. And because, again, of the strike, I wasn't able to um, go with him to end, open that film in any of the film festivals that it was at. It was at TIFF, and I think it was in Venice, or I forget where it was, but I wasn't able to go to it. And his home film festival was in Sweden three nights ago, so I went to that. And then I had the flight from... Oh my God, we oh, had I had to get here from from <laughs> Gothenburg, Gothenburg in Sweden, oh. which is a lovely place, and but it was involved it involved three flights via Iceland. <laughs> like, I, I'm so I'm just so. Did they take you in a loop? <laughs> three flights oh, uh, like, from Iceland, just landing in Iceland. Just thinking, 
how does this work? Because <laughs> I'm so, I'm so, um, I don't tend to look at the things till the last minute. So it was night, the night before, and I looked at the thing in my phone, and I was like, Mary, we, this is, we've got three flights tomorrow. <laughs> and we had our two-year-old with us, our two-and-a-half-year-old oh. son, Laurie. Oh, my God. I was like, oh, I know, he's the best. Oh, my God. But when, but I was thinking, this is, so it just was just yeah. a nightmare, you know. Well, Who do we think? You know, every flight had like two hours in an airport between it, and we had three flights. Oh, my God. The last one was eight hours, and he was just like, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I don't want to be on an airplane anymore. And I was like, join the club, so. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando, you had suffered through three flights to get here just for Yay! you. Come on. So uh, Scotland to, to Sweden to Orlando. Have you? Uh, we're in the home of Disney World right. and Galaxy's Edge, uh, which is the Star Wars land. Yeah, have you, have, who's who's been? Who's been? There? I've been to the one in LA. I've I was going to ask you. I've been to the one in LA. Uh, Mary and I went the night of. When was it? The night before. No, I think they'd they'd opened. It was when the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan Canary? <laughs> that's, that's the spin-off that you don't know about. Oh. That's his cousin. No spoilers. Obi-Wan Canary. <laughs> um, on his mission to Tutuwan. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a little bird that he, yeah, yeah, the story yeah, of the bird. Canary, that's, that's right, that's right. He's got a little laser sword. <laughs> um, what was I saying? <laughs> so we went, um, we went, we'd gone to Anaheim to the celebration where they showed the first couple of episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm -hmm. Some of you might have been there. <laughs> it was fantastic. I mean, it was so exciting to be amongst all the people and see it on the big screen. And then the next day, I, it was the first time I'd, I'd done a, a, a Comic-Con. I'd had never sure. done one before. And I just thought, well, I'm in Anaheim and it was celebration. I thought, I'm going to do it and see what, see what it's like. And I did it, and I, and I realized I liked it, and that's why I'm still doing them here. So, no. um, <laughs> um, because it's now awful nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice. So, but that next day, we had some time, and we went to Disney. So we went, I no, it was that night, I, I can't remember. We went at night, no. and it was just like me and Mary walking around, you know. <laughs> with a cap on and we just about got away with it. We didn't get- Just in the, in the public? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but I hadn't seen it before, so- I If those people those... know knew that you were just wandering around- I, I did. I caught a couple of people's eye, you know, and I was like- Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're talking about um, going to conventions. Obviously, you're meeting a ton of people. Orlando, there's a, a ton of, not only Star Wars fans, but Star Wars collectors, right? They collect- lightsabers and, and different items from the movies, both real and, and fabricated by artists and artisans. What, what's the most unique thing that you've gotten this weekend? Has something stood out to you um, in terms of a prop or an item or, or a fan experience? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just, well, I've, there's an awful lot of nice fan art that we see yes, yes, yes. while we're signing uh, or while we're taking photographs of people. Um, yeah, there was some nice, there was, there's always nice, I just like when young people have done drawings, you know, mm -hmm. and I always like to try and, and I always encourage them to keep, keep going, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and, because it is such a, that, that side of our nature is often the one that get, gets sort of trampled down first, you know, in our, uh, trying to get through school and college and uh, into jobs is that, that childish desire to just put a pen to paper and make a yeah. drawing, I think is really, nice to hold on to that in, in, or in whatever other way it might be playing music or whatever sure, it be sure. um, but uh, yeah I like that I love that yeah there, there's so much good fan art out there yeah, yeah. I almost set out for a bomber jacket today though because Hayden was wearing a nice Star Wars bomber jacket mm. and um, we were it was so cold where we were <laughs> like, it was just so cold but when we stopped for London I was almost about to send because I don't know that I can walk out and get one Maybe I should just... <laughs> I, I, I highly... I don't recommend you just walking out to get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has anyone seen any jackets? Yeah. 
You're lucky. It's cold in there. There was so many people here today. It was we were feeling the, the heat in the building. It was oh, yeah. nice, but we had so many fans here uh, for all different all different genres. Uh, you mentioned uh, screening the Obi Wan series, the first couple episodes. Uh, wh what was it like? I know you've answered this question a bunch, but maybe not for folks here live. Just just talk a little bit about returning to the character of Obi Wan yeah. in the Obi Wan series. Yeah. Well, I was lucky to see it. Um, on my, I, I was lucky to see it first alone because I was a producer on the show too sure and so by the time Deborah had finished them I went to see I went down to see the first three mm -hmm. and uh, I went down to the where we shot the in the studio where we shot the, the series and met Deborah and we and she sat me in this little screening room and then press play and left you know <laughs> so I just watched one two and three alone and it was it was awesome to see. I mean, it was just yeah. incredible to see, but uh, because I was so thrilled um, with her work, so ta she's so talented, Deborah Chow, our director. Yeah, let's um, give it up for Deborah Chow. Yeah. 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 And she directed them all. You know, it wasn't in the, usually in television series. There'll be a director will maybe direct the first one or two, maybe to sort of set the tone. And then often that's it, and then yeah. other directors come in. But I'm so thrilled that, I, and I wanted to have just what somebody's one person's vision. And my God, she's so brilliant. She knows the world inside out. She was always telling me what was what about, <laughs> you know, like things that I was supposed to know <laughs> <laughs> about the world. You know, she's keeping me right. Um, that's funny. Was there, yeah, was there something that you kind of came back to you, or that you all forgot, the, all or? the time, yeah. all the time? Names of planets, names of droids. Yeah, <laughs> and names of everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, she was brilliant. And um, but when I watched the last three, I did the same. So I went away. They weren't quite finished. But I, watched, I watched the first three, and then I came back some weeks later, and again sat alone. But I was like the the sixth one really got me. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah my I was God. just sitting there with tears rolling down my face watching. I was so touched by it. Oh, and so, so were we. So were we. Of yeah, course. So yeah. Please. Just so, so happy, just so happy to be that we managed to do it, and 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 also that we did it like that. Like yeah. I, I feel like we could have, you know. There's always, it was, it was originally going to be a movie, and I, you know, I've often thought, well, should it have been a movie? Or, but I kind of think it's great that we did it that way, and it's a longer story, and mm -hmm. hopefully it's more satisfying as a result. Mm -hmm. We got more screen, you know, more time to, to weave a story. Um, yeah. yeah. Just hope we can do another one. Can everyone write to Disney? Wow. If you could just, I'll, I'll give you some email addresses at the end. Yeah. I'll just say, dear Disney, <laughs> let's have another. Let's have a bit more of Obi Wan Kenobi, please. <laughs> right, dear, dear Disney at Disney.com. Yeah. I think Disney America it should find them. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about coming back. Uh, we are about to bring, uh, as you just said, uh, your brother, um, Anakin Skywalker, on stage a little bit later. What was it like seeing him back on set for, for the first time, the first, oh the first show? Gosh. Well, it's amazing. It was amazing because you can't imagine. We were very close when we shot the prequels, you know. Sure. I mean, I'd done the first one, which Hayden, of course, wasn't in. And then we went to, we shot the first one in London. And uh, then they moved the whole shoot to Australia, where we shot the second one and the third one. Um, and so Hayden arrived, and I, I just was so um, impressed with him when, for right for off the bat. He was such a serious act, young actor, and he, you know, he, gave, he just had so much thought about it, and sure. he, he talked about it not in, he talked about it in a deep way, like he was really trying to m mine it. For everything that he could get out of it as an actor, and I, I, I really admired that about him. And um, and we were all shooting away. You know, we were all. I didn't live in Australia, neither did he. So we spent a lot of time together. And um, yeah, we were just had this, and we spent a lot of time learning these fights. And um, and then we had that relationship on screen. You know, the sort of uh, brother. What's the fancy word for brotherhood? Paternal? No, that's father. Oh, yeah, fraternity, fraternity. Fraternal Frater relationship? Yeah, is it? Fraternal, oh, yeah. yeah, fraternal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jet lag. Yeah. <laughs> three flights, three yeah, flights. Three everybody. flights, everybody. Yeah. Brotherly relationship. <laughs> and, um, 
yeah, I just love him to bits. And yeah. then we hadn't seen each other for a long time. So when, when I knew that um, we were going to be doing this series, and I, I'd met him by chance um, during the lockdown, I met him somewhere. And I was able to say, look, I think we're going to do a series of Obi-Wan. And at that point, we didn't know exactly what the story was. I had no idea if we were going to... So I wasn't able to say, you know, I want you to be in it or anything right. like that. Right. It's because I didn't know yet where the story was going to go. And, um, but then when I, when I did know that we were going to ask him to do it, yeah, oh God. And then when we got on set, I mean, I've never seen so many people on a film set in my life. <laughs> when we came on set, I was like, there's a lot of people on this film set today. <laughs> What's going on? And then I turn around and Hayden's coming on. I'm like, oh, I see, because everybody was there to see him. Yeah. And it was um, both of you. They were here. Both of you. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but and it was kind of. Part. And the first thing we did, I think I'm right in saying the first thing we shot was the flashback sequence mm. for, in episode four. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were also like, we looked like we did in. I mean, we had dots all over our face, so they could maybe do a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of help making us younger. <laughs> but um, apart from that, we were in the old costumes, oh, yeah. you know, and, and then we were doing that fight that was just great. So yeah, it was an amazing experience, and it was like I love what I love about shooting it. Also, was that when I, this, the crew um, from for the Obi Wan Kenobi series were real fans, you yeah. know, like an awful lot of people that work in Star Wars now. Our fans, you yeah. know, and I, that that didn't that wasn't the case before when we made the prequels. But I loved that. So there was like a real buzz whenever we were together. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you you mentioned being a producer on the series. Uh, obviously, you've gotten uh, you don't only act now. You produce. Uh, you direct uh, American Pastoral, a uh, film that you direct recently. Make some noise for that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah, obviously a lot of fans out there. What was that like transitioning uh, to directing? Is it something that you found new challenges with, and is it something you would continue to pursue? I'd forward? love to do it more. I mean, it's a, it was a really big learning, learning curve in everything other than the actual shoot. Sure. Because the actual shoot, I've, I just been, I've been doing this for a long time, and I, the, the idea of being a director just means I get to do it the way I know that I love to do it best myself mm -hmm. as an actor. And um, so I was totally, that bit of it was just absolutely brilliant. I loved working with the actors. I was lucky to have brilliant actors to work with. A good writing, great design, good costumes. You know, everything about it was, was good. The stuff I didn't know about was all the pre-production and all the post-production. And that was something that I had to learn um, on the job. And I, but I realized that it's all just taste yeah. and you have to, you have to have courage to allow the worst kind of directors, the ones that don't want to relinquish their power to decide everything, you know. It's just, it's just not how it works. It's right. not a, you're not making a painting, you're making a movie, and that is a collaboration. And the best directors are the ones who stand in the middle of all the talent that they've pulled around them to make the film and allow those people to work the best they can. Sure. And that, that takes a bit of courage. But that's what I tried to do, and that, that's what I thought I did, would do in the post-production as well. Editing is very much taste, you know? It's like, you can't really put your finger on it, but you, it's just taste. It's like, yeah. we need to cut here. And you're like, love look, it. I can't really explain why, but... <laughs> um, and I loved it very much, and I loved the film we made. I just haven't... My, yeah, there's been lots going on in my life since I made that film, mm -hmm. which has st sort of stopped me from... Um, finding another film to direct, but that's definitely what I'd like to do. I'd like to direct more, and I, I, I just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a funny time in movies, and um, it, it's finding the right, it's just finding the right story, ultimately. Sure. I think you can worry too much about where you're making it for. Is it gonna be on, oh, that's a shame you're looking around that speaker. <laughs> that's not much fun, is it? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I feel like we should move over there so that they can... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, we're up there! Okay, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, an idiot. I didn't know that was there. <laughs> you're fine. I'm much better looking up there anyway. I hope. Don't forget, anyway. to, don't forget to stand up and say hello to those folks on that side. People! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry for you two. <laughs> sorry. You've got the safety of the distance. <laughs> That's very nice. Um, yeah. 
what was I saying? Anyway, no, just some r- rubbish r- about that, right? looking, looking for upcoming projects. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's next? I think the story, the, 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 I've sort of realized, because I've spent a lot of time wondering, like, well, where, where do you, you know, the kind of movies that I would want to make, people sort of don't go to the cinema to see them anymore. You know, sure, the cinemas sure. become um, blockbustery and um, horror films are always quite well received in sure. the cinema. Um, and then big superhero films and such. But you know, the films that I would want to direct about people and are not much gone to suit, they happen on television and I was thinking, well, was that? And I just suddenly thought, well, you just gotta find a story you want to tell and tell that story. And yeah. it doesn't really matter where it's seen. I love that. Yeah, that's my thought about that. It's amazing. Well, we, we can't wait to see what, what's next. What it is, me too. Yeah. <laughs> Offers on a postcard. Yeah, let's yeah. hear it, let's hear it. You're so generous uh, to your, your fans, obviously meeting them at conventions, which is a, a huge place for, for fans um, of the Star Wars genre to, to meet, right, and, and hang out together. You were so nice to these yeah. folks here. So we have some fan questions uh, that were submitted um, online. Uh, we reached out to a bunch of uh, fan groups and, and folks that are here in the audience. So I'm gonna shout out some names, and if you hear yourself, I will say I stole your question, Peter McLean. Peter McLean, are you here somewhere? Make some noise. There they are, there they are. From, from Newfoundland, uh, Canada, Newfoundland, Canada. I uh, asked a question about returning to Obi-Wan, so thank you. Oh, yeah, thank uh, you. Th- thank you for that. Uh, well, let's go to the next one uh, from Michael Bigelow from Palm Beach, Florida. Michael Bigelow, are you out there? <laughs> They're being very polite. He's very polite. Like you can give a whoop, you can go whoop whoop or whatever, yeah. Um, thank you for your question. For the duel on Mustafar in Revenge of the Sith, who obtained the worst injury during the rigorous choreography or did anyone we always got our we always got our um f- knuckles hit smacked yeah i mean just it's just par for the course for that kind of thing but what's interesting is this sort of we can talk about it but the um how the the late how the swords have evolved for sure and when we made the prequels we had a guy uh who who's who had a he had like a cart he had like what Somebody named Thomas. Thomas, yeah. Thomas? Thomas the lightsaber maker. Is he here? Thomas? <laughs> Have you, are you here? He's a, Thomas is in the bathroom. Somebody get him. No. <laughs> I was going on to say Thomas, obviously, was, had a, his cart. Yeah. And he, he, we had these, um, they, were, they were made of some sort of alloy. They were metal. For sure. And uh, they would bend after every single take. Mm-hmm. Um, and when Hayden and I were fighting each other, often didn't make it through the take because we just went at each other so hard. <laughs> and um, that they've changed now. So now they have actual uh, swords that light up, which is what gave us those amazing lighting yes. changes in that, in that end scene um, in the series. By, by chance, we were, as we were rehearsing the scene, you know, we had our swords here and his face was blue, uh, we were blue. Someone get that phone, will you? <laughs> and, then, and then as we moved over here, our faces turned red and, and it was just like magic, you know, we were like, oh my God. So we, um, but they don't fight as well as the old ones do. They, they, they have a tendency to sort of go, sort of like, <laughs> <laughs> it just isn't quite as satisfying as when they used to go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but we would we would always catch each other's fingers because they don't have George in his wisdom decided not to give them a hilt. Oh, most, yeah. most sword designers in the world, yeah. oh, you know, throughout history, have put a hilt there so that you don't get your yeah. knuckles wrapped. <laughs> but anyway, and then I still need one. And then Kylo Ren decides his hilt is a lightsaber, which is completely ridiculous. That's right. Yeah. I mean, come on, he's got all the protection he needs, right? There. Look at there. Look at that. that yeah. Is that, there is, there is that too much to ask for? A little. <laughs> Thank you. That's. Now, what's the next question? That was it, yeah. Um, All right, this one is from Cyril Baranowski from Orlando, Florida. What's up, Cyril? There we go. Good friend of Thomas's. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Everybody knows Thomas. Uh, We talked a little bit about just the excitement about returning to the role in your first days. Were there there any challenges, um, to quote their uh, question, returning to the role of Obi-Wan after so long, after so many years? Yeah, I mean, the, the... 
The first one was the accent. Like I, I went to, um, I went to do some castings with Deborah, and um, we read with several different actors for some of the roles. And um, I, I just, it was months before we started the shoot, but I went down, we did it on the set of uh, the Mandalorian set on a Sunday when they weren't working. So we had a bit of a set there. And I, I went down there on a Sunday morning and I was taken to dressing room and there was like Obi-Wan's clothes hanging up. Like, <laughs> so I guess not my old costume, but it, it certainly looked like some of it could have been. And then, um, so I suddenly was putting all this, costume back on again and looking in the mirror and going, oh my, wow, it's been like a long time. Yeah. It sort of hit me in a way that of what I was about to do. Mm. And then I went on set and I um, hadn't really given it much thought. I just thought, well, it'll be all right. And, and I got on set and I was just not, you know, these poor little actors who were coming, who were reading for all these other roles. And I was, I was just like trying to do the Obi-Wan. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do Obi-Wan. It was just coming out like some posh English guy. And nothing at all like uh, Obi Wan uh, or Alec Guinness, and so that was the first challenge. Was like, oh, I see, I've got to remind myself, and I, yeah. and that's what I always did in the prequels. Was I just sort of watched Alec Guinness all the time, and I, not only just in Star Wars, but in all his early films. Um, and now I was a bit older, I got to watch him in some of his older films. You yeah, know, and, yeah. Um, wanted to just try. I've always, it always has to try. It always has to. I don't try and do an impersonation of Alec Guinness at all. Sure. But, I, but it has to feel like him to me. Yeah. And, um, and, and uh, often it, it, that's when I know that I, I'm happy to move on with a take if, it's, if it starts feeling like I like it. Yeah, shout out to Sir Alec Guinness, obviously the great. Um, the great Alec Guinness. Um, and you, and you, you, you did an amazing job of transitioning. Margot uh, Marcano from East Brunswick, New Jersey. Margot, are you out there? Um, yeah, what's up, Margot? <laughs> Uh, asked that what aspects of the original trilogy inspired uh, your character? So, so yeah, you spoke on it. All of Were it, there, it. Was it voice? Was it physicality? Was it everything with with Alan? Yeah, all of it. I mean, there's something. There's just something so iconic about his performance. Oh my God! It's like he's over there. <laughs> <laughs> See, just in there that was, moment, a man walked. As, there's an Obi Wan Kenobi in the hallway. And he, yeah, and his light just walked into a light in our face. <laughs> Sorry, Alec. I'm sorry. I tried my best. Oh, that was really. Did you see it? That was a force ghost. Oh, I just... I, he, it, now he's gone completely. He's gone. So that's even crazier. Force ghost Alec Guinness just joined us, everybody okay. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope I see him over there now. I know we're in trouble. <laughs> um, it's all of it. I've just what you know. It's his rhythm and it's his humor yeah. and yeah. there's something. Uh, um, his little eye roll that he does, and I, I mean, I, I tried to, I just, I didn't, I just like, I soaked it all up. Yeah, I love it, it. I love it. Uh, we have one final question, then we have a fun little game we're gonna end with, uh, with you. The, um, this comes from Ashley from Florida. Ashley? <laughs> Could be a bunch of Ashleys from Florida, but there's one. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about uh, after Star Wars. You, you shoot the prequels and you move on to some of our favorite movie musicals or music uh, movies with musicals in them or musical moments. Moulin Rouge! Oh, we get down, down with Love, Down with Love. That's a good one. Beauty and the Beast, the live action. So Ashley just wants to, what, what is that like for you? Like what, what was the transition um, as an actor into a, a musical movie or, or a movie with uh, songs and, and music? I've always, I mean, I've always sung, I've always been musical through school. I was, I, you know, I wanted, I was only interested in, exactly. I was only interested <laughs> in, um, perform, you know, anything that felt like perform. I always think I always knew I wanted to be an actor and so I found it difficult to be interested in academics. I, I should have been, but I wasn't. And um, so music was a way for me through school to, to sort of perform, I suppose. So I was a, a, a sang, and it was really from a young age, I was a soloist in the choir, you know, Christmas carols and stuff. I did once in Royal David City when I was like six, <laughs> in, a, in a church like that. Oh, I was like, once in Royal, it was terrifying. I still remember the fear, and then, um, uh, so that, and then uh, I was a side drummer in the pipe band, I was a French horn player, I just anything that allowed me to sort of do music, so, so to, to then do the musicals was like, 
taking that on, you know. Yeah, yeah. It was just, we had great um, singing coach on Moulin Rouge, and uh, I loved it, I loved recording. We, we worked with um, the music producer Marius de Vries, and we just recorded loads and loads of songs that didn't make it into the show, but we just kept recording different, I did that. I suggested we do, for the end, after Satine has died, I, I suggested we record I can't live if living is without you. you know, oh, like, oh. The Harry Nielsen one. Oh gosh, it was, a, bit, it was a bit too on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we recorded it nonetheless. Oh wow, it exists wow. somewhere. And I love that process of recording music. I love yeah. it. So to do the musical was just a joy, really. But the nice thing was we pre-recorded all the music, so we we spent you know two three months with Baz in Australia sure. rehearsing and then we and during that time it was like being at drama school you know on a Monday morning you'd have three hours with Marius and on a Tuesday afternoon you'd be in the dance hall and <laughs> you'd, it was like it was and then we'd be rehearsing the scenes and so we pre-recorded all the songs and then we when we shot with them because for editing it has to keep the same beat it's always best to sort of uh, record to playback so you've got the music playing on set and you're singing along with it if you like um, and then we had the ability to it was a little <laughs> I don't think Thomas was involved but we had a like a, <laughs> a, little, a little sort of trolley that was, a, <laughs> it, was like a sort of, it was like a sort of Thomas is gonna see this on, on Thomas, YouTube one day and be like finally the respect yeah, that the respect deserve. Yeah. <laughs> he may have been involved in this I don't know but it was a it was like a telephone box on wheels with a door and a microphone in it and you could go and it was wheeled from set to set and sure. um, if something when you were shooting a scene like the tango scene or something like that, and something didn't feel quite right, you could nip into the telephone box yeah. and re-record that bit. And within minutes, they would have that laid into the playback. So you wow. could then, wow. and then also you could re-record re it afterwards when they cut it, you know, if something, so you, you were able to do the singing before, during, and after, basically, wow. which wow. was really cool. Yeah, that's very cool. I mean, I think that's why that movie uh, stands up, and so yeah. it, you feel like you're watching a, a true musical on stage yeah. in, in film format. Yes, yeah. I loved yeah. it so much. I, I loved, loved it. it. Oh. I'll never forget some. I mean, some of those memories of, like the tango, walking through mm -hmm. the dance. You know, walking down through the set with the tango dancers. Roxanne, like, yeah. oh my goodness. Oh it's yeah. Like, you, it's, it makes the hair. Getting chills. Just getting chills out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Amazing. All right, are we ready for a little game? Yeah, my daughter, Esther, oh, yeah. is filming with, uh, she's playing Nicole Kidman's daughter in a movie right now. What? Yeah. Oh, sir, yes. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, maybe, that, maybe no one's meant to know that. Yeah. I was going to ask for the title, should've but... Checked. Yeah. I should have checked before I just announced that to the world. Yeah. <laughs> Proud dad moment, sorry. <laughs> All right, um, you and we appreciate your time on stage. Thank you for answering uh, those fan questions. We Thank really, you. Uh, we asked all of the fans in this room before the panel eight questions. People are already just oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. About Star Wars things. Now there's no wrong answer. Okay. We're gonna ask you to pick between two things. You're not trying to guess how the audience guessed. It's just you, you and McGregor. How would you feel? And I won't be judged. You won't be judged by any all. of these people. No, 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 no. 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 Okay. Wait. Who's gonna, are we the judge? No, come on, give it up, yeah, no, that's it. All right, so let's, let's pop it up there. Um, we've got question number one, you can, you can see over there, or look up, or I'll just read it to you. Um, where would you rather live, Cloud City or Naboo? <laughs> uh, Cloud City. Well, I mean, I think Naboo. I think Cloud City is probably going to be more interesting. I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. See how the audience guess. Yep, there we go. Uh, Cloud City wins. Oh. 74. Uh, no, Naboo won. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Naboo won. Oh, uh, that's wrong. Right. Okay. Angry. That's just the audience. You flipped them, though. That's interesting. They did do, that did do a weird thing. It puts the top one on, on the top. Who would you rather train under, Yoda or Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> we'll move on to number three. All right, I'm number Obi -Wan three. Kenobi. <laughs> Do you want to yeah. see how the audience voted? Yeah. Uh, well, I should say Yoda, to be polite. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Because otherwise yeah. it would just be me in a room on my own. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. It's a good point. 71% picked Obi-Wan Kenobi. All right, number three. Who would you rather invite to your birthday party? C-3PO or R2-D2? This is 
your birthday party. C-3PO, because he's it's much more fun. Yeah. It's just more fun to watch, like, trying to get around. <laughs> yeah. There's always someone at your birthday party that's a bit drunk and falling over yeah. on the pants. <laughs> that would, be that would totally yeah. be him. Yeah. <laughs> R2-1, R2-1 there uh, with the audience. So far, I've totally gone against it. <laughs> yeah. All right, number four. Um, what would you rather fly, an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter? Well, an X X-Wing. Yeah. It's a far superior aircraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 X-Wing wins, everybody. X-Wing yeah. wins there. All right, number five. Would you rather be skilled with a lightsaber or skilled with a force so you lose one ability? That's not a choice. That's the same thing. That's the correct answer! Yeah, that's the correct answer. That's my thought. <laughs> Very nice. We have a few more, a couple more. Would you rather kiss a Wookiee or kiss a Gungan? <laughs> I think, I think as a Jedi, you sort of, um, you're not meant to kiss anyone. Oh! <laughs> That's also the correct answer. Neither. Yeah, 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 very good. I don't think that's allowed. Two for two, two for two. Yeah. All right, uh, here we go, number seven. Who has the better hair, Obi-Wan or Anakin? Oh, uh, well, it depends what episode you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all know in episode two, it's a pretty tasty <laughs> hair. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, they didn't even switch up there, but we had... Uh, Anakin. It was, it was close. It was 58 for Anakin. 41 for Obi-Wan. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll see how Hayden uh, answers in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and last one, last one, Ewan. Join the rebellion or join the empire? Should we pick? What? Yeah, would you rather join the rebellion or join the empire? If it was you. If it was me? Yeah. Well, again, I, you know, I thought it was the rebellion, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh no! Uh oh! What's happening here? Looks like it's coming out. Oh my gosh, everybody! It's Hayden Christensen!